Financial Times for his work on using games to help collaborate effectively. So please join me in welcoming you. Can you help me okay? Can I use the mic? Can you hear me okay? Yes? Yes? No? Can you hear me? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start by uh, doubling down Michael um, on what Michael said. Um, the reason that we have a for-profit company is because I also run a nonprofit called Every Voice Engaged Foundation. And uh, so uh, to Michael's point, find something that you're passionate about. Uh, what Every Voice Engaged Foundation does is we do massive civic engagement. And for example, one of our case studies is in the last five years, working with the city of San Jose, we've engaged thousands of citizens of San Jose and taken them from $100 million in debt to a net positive this year. And the failure mode of Western democracies is that we entitle ourselves out of existence. And it's not just America, but around the world, we are trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in debt. And the only way out of this massive problem that we've created for ourselves is to work together. Which is why, and, and again, I'm sure Michael is familiar with this, some of you may be, uh, the, Mike, uh, the Samuel Sinek uh, framework of start with why. So what we believe at Continue is we believe that collaborating teams are the world's best and pretty much only hope for solving the problems we face. And those teams have to collaborate at massive scale. And we just happen to build awesome tools to enable collaboration at scale which leads us into road mapping. Effective roadmaps are a collaboration at scale problem. And we're gonna talk about failure modes of roadmaps, why most roadmaps are broken. I'll talk about what I call the strategy, glue, and tactics model of agile product management. I didn't talk about some of my background, but I'll add, I helped form the first agile conference in 2003. I gave the keynote last year at the agile conference. I also gave the keynote at Agile Australia. And I've served on the board of the Agile Alliance. And every month, I produce a collaboration at scale webinar series with the Scrum Alliance, where we talk about how to solve collaboration problems at scale, which we usually want to talk about you know, 30, 40, 100, 500 Scrum teams in multiple locations. How do you get them to collaborate? We tackle that. I'll give you a format that we like as far as I know, I've written the only pattern language on strategic product road mapping. I'll give you a, a URL to go get it from SlideShare so you can leverage it. And then we'll talk about how you scale. So why do we road map? Well, if you think about strategy, right, and that's the way to get people excited. Strategy is that long-term view. And strategy is fun, and strategy in many ways is kind of easy. You pick a few trends, you kind of project into the future, and eh, it's strategy. And you won't know if you're right or wrong for a few years anyway, so who cares? Tactic, especially if you're agile, is that backlog, right? That grindy, small thing that gets engineers going. And you got the product manager in the middle because we're, we're grinding rocks, right? Engineers want small pebbles. Markets want big, chunky problems solved. And so our job is to grind these rocks and we have to do it in the context of these strategies, and we have to do it in that effective execution. Which means all of us are crazy. Now, I am the CEO of our company, but in a smaller company, the CEOs also act as the product manager. And product managers are crazy, and the reason we're crazy is because we're right in the middle of the time horizon. We have to communicate to our boss big, chunky things that span time horizons, and we have to communicate small, little things to the engineers, you're you're crazy in your head, right? He's like, um, does that match you? I was just looking at that slide, and there's a slide I'm going to put up later, similar, very similar. Very similar, right? So, and and the challenge here is, you know, we have to also understand that precision changes, and and uh, you know, I can tell how long someone's been a product manager by how they answer, "When's my birthday?" So, someone asked me, "When's my birthday?" Sometime in the first half of the year. <laughs> think about it, right? Because the junior product manager, when's the software going to be out? November 10th. Oh, no, 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 no. Sometime in Q4. Right? You got to learn the ranges and the precisions to be effective in your job. 
And you have to, now, we, as you get closer, of course, you get more precise. But part of effective road mapping is to know the time horizons in which you're working in so that you can communicate effectively in that time horizon. Most road maps are broken. When I, when I look at road maps, I see all sorts of failure modes. The biggest is the product ex, ex engineer who becomes product manager, and they get to control the product because they're going to finally tell those business people how stupid they are, and they're going to show them exactly what's needed to be done. I'm going to build the features that I know are going to be successful. Because y'all want to be Steve Jobs, right? Y'all want to channel your, I don't have to listen to anyone. I get to do what I want. He's like, oh, I am. But if you were, you wouldn't be here. Think about it. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm going to add one more. I'm going to double down on one more thing that you said, Michael, which I thought was nice. Um, remember his slide in the last bullet? It said, you'd be proud to tell your family and friends that you do this, something along those lines, right? Yep. It's the other way around. When, when I say to my wife and my four kids, dad's not gonna be home tonight because I'm gonna go to San Jose, I'm gonna be with the residents, I'm gonna talk with them about participatory budgeting, I'm gonna help them make good choices. They groan and they say, okay, dad, go do what you need to do. <laughs> so that's when you're really there. It's not when you tell your wife and kids that you gotta go, it's when your wife and kids say, you gotta go do what you gotta go do goes both ways. So that's a failure mode. Now the other one is there's no visible logic. We see roadmaps like this all the time and you're like, oh, okay. I don't understand it. I mean, and, by the way, just like go to Google advanced search and say, you know, product roadmap, pick a company that you want to, to kind of, and then just look at the images and you'll see these images of the roadmaps that say nothing. Nothing, nothing important. Now, what this starts to realize is that when we say roadmap, we mean the internal messy thing that drives the business, not the external marketing thing that may or may not get investors excited in your company. So you'll see in a bit that the roadmaps that we're talking about are messy. And if your roadmap is too clean, no one's going to believe it. So, roadmap from a startup board. This is like, yeah, this is what we're going to do. You know, release 5.1, and then it's going to go generally available. And then, you know, customer B is really going to be happy. And then we got these custom projects. Okay. Or this format, right? Which is, you know, oh, look, at it's PowerPoint with chevrons. And it's got, <laughs> it's got time, right? And it's got these bullet points. I don't understand how the product grows. I don't understand how it evolves. I don't understand how we go from, and I don't necessarily like these terms, MVP to awesome. Do you guys use the MVP thing? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, of course, you're leaving. Pivot today? Or was that yesterday, or, or is that tomorrow? <laughs> I don't know, I've got to pivot, baby. Right? Finally, roadmaps are a collaborative problem, and they fail when the first time the people that rely on what you do is when you give them the roadmap. Here's what we're going to build. And the salespeople go, well, that's really nice. I can't sell that. Did you ask me about what I could sell? Or the marketing team says, it's really brilliant that you're about to release the product two months after our major trade show. Did you think about asking us what our marketing calendar was? Oh, no, you didn't. So the vast majority of human markets are governed by a set of market events and market rhythms. And if you don't capture those rhythms of the market, you can't release into the market need. I call it selling swimsuits in Buffalo in February. Yeah, you're agile. You can do it. But no one in Buffalo, New York is buying swimsuits in January. So you've got to understand the rhythms of any given market, and you've got to understand the key events so that you can leverage those. And humans are social creatures, and we invent these rhythms as markets mature because they're important to us. Very important. So the, the outcome is that you are unable to deliver. So now, how do I get a benefit? This is a bit of a wordy slide, I apologize. But basically, there's a lot of benefits to a roadmap. If you don't have one, then you're probably dealing with people yelling at you and the loudest voice winning. You, you 
the engineers aren't, don't get excited about where you're headed or the dev teams don't get excited. You don't have a way to talk with customers and you don't actually bring customers into your company. One of the things that I learned when I first moved to Silicon Valley about 20 years ago was really fun. I, um, my boss at the time was a guy named Daniel Lewin. Daniel now runs yeah. um, Microsoft uh, Silicon Valley campus. His name really is Daniel, D A N apostrophe L, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a fun name, Daniel. So uh, Daniel, um, I remember he was a CEO, and I'm like, this is our roadmap, and we should share it not only with our customers, let's just put it on the web. And he goes, no, you, you can't. He, 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 our competitors will see it. I'm like, yeah, and they'll crap a brick because they know we can execute against that roadmap, and they can't. Now he didn't do it, and there were good reasons for it. But if you share the kind of roadmap that we're talking about with your customers, you'll find that they become closer to your company. Now, roadmaps are scary because you actually have to say no. And this is the hardest thing that product managers do. They, ha they have to say no. They have to say no all the time. And it also creates a certain kind of commitment to an uncertain future. And those things are both scary, which means we have to adjust them. So we have to have a point of view and we have the mechanism of updating. Now, how do roadmaps fit into this thing called Agile? Especially because Scrum gives so little guidance to the role of actual strategic thinking in Agile. The way we look at it is we think of three time horizons, strategy, glue, and tactic. And we think of a set of deliverables that product managers are responsible in each of those areas. So we think that we're, you're responsible for explaining the why of your product. And we actually recommend using the Simon Sinek framework, start with why. Then we want to know what your vision is of your product. And then we want to look at, well, what's your, what's your actual business model structure? And if you've got a more mature product, you might use a business model canvas. If you're starting out, you might use Ash as Lean Canvas. If you're a product manager and you're working on either big B2C stuff, this is all on SlideShare, so you can grab it or whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, or if you're working internally, you should at least say, this is how we make profit. We're going to cut this kind of cost. The glue is a roadmap and a user story map, and I'll talk about roadmaps. And then the tactics are the backlogs and things like that. Now, there's natural information flows, and there's natural ways in which Oh, I didn't uh, come through. Uh, but there was a whole, there's supposed to be a whole set of frameworks that fit into this. I'll have to fix that slide. Sorry. Now, I'm going to talk about the pattern language for road mapping as defined in this uh, in my book. It's down here. You can go to bit.ly.com and just type in road mapping uh, dash patterns or go to SlideShare, search for my name, and you can download the road mapping pattern language from SlideShare. So it, it, it's widely accessible. I think a good roadmap answers a set of very fundamental questions. And again, this is your internal document, not something that you're necessarily going to give the marketing team to just share. Who are you serving? What's the market? What are the features and benefits? Meaning, why do they care? When are you going to serve them? What are the market events and market rhythms that positions your company to sell well? Let me give you a really clear example of market events and market rhythms. Crayola makes what? Crayons. Crayons. When does Crayola make all of its money? Back to school. Back to school. What time of year is it? August. August to? End of September. August to end of September. And if you actually look a few years ago at the revenue curve of Crayola, they were making roughly 80% of their revenue around that time frame. And of course, they, they were doing everything they could to get more revenue in other parts of the year. But guess what? How many people buy crayons in February? Not a lot. Because they bought them already. So what they did was they did the smart thing and they went, okay, rather than trying to change the rhythm of a market, why don't we understand the rhythm of a new market relative to our skills and capabilities, our core competencies? And what they found was they have core competency in non-toxic dye that you can package and make really fun. Easter eggs. Easter eggs and stuff that you spray in snow. Oh, cool. So there's a whole, like, we don't get it in Cali because, like, we don't have that. Yeah. But where I grew up, I, I did grow up outside of Buffalo, right? 
And I'm used to, I, when I was a kid, it was not uncommon to have snow this high on the ground. I know people are looking at me like, what's that? <laughs> what's snow? So when I, if I were to have that kind of a product when I was a kid, it'd be a blast, right? You know, you could paint the snow, non-toxic dye. So now they've got a new line of product that move into a different market event and rhythm. How? What is your, what I call the architecture? What is your technical architecture? And what are the marketing events, the marketing events and market rhythms? What will drive sale? And are there any external factors? Are our competitors doing things? Are the regulatory environment changing in some way that's relevant to my company or my industry? Now this is an actual roadmap from a client, kind of spray painted. But let me give you some example. This is the who, and you can see uh, the arrow here, this target market was split into two categories, and they start to differentiate between what they want to deliver. I like this item here because marketing is not sure when this feature was to be delivered. Notice the quarters, quarter, 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 a full year out. So as we go further out in time, it's a little less clear. This is actually a question mark. And I love this one because what the marketing team said is, hey, we need this kind of capability and we think it's about this time frame. And the engineering team are saying, great, we don't know how to deliver it. We don't know how to do that. As we get closer, we'll figure it out. So there's a kind of an honesty here. And notice that there's a collaboration going on here. It's not that lone product manager saying, here's the roadmap. There's a collaboration going involved, or going on of, of several people that are involved. Now, the how is the technical architecture. How will we deliver this? Either our existing architecture will support it, we're good to go, or we have to make some kind of investment to change our architecture so we can make that thing happen. So far, so good? Questions on format? Yes, no? Question. Do you use a tool for roadmap? Do I use a tool for roadmap? I use a variety of tools, starting with post-its and going all the way to electronic tools. Um, this particular tool was done in, or this particular roadmap was done in Visio. I'm aware that there's some very interesting startups uh, in the space right now. There's aha.io that has some interesting things. There's Roadmonk. They look like they have some interesting tools. So there's a couple of roadmapping tools. Um, I am. I'm reserved on how useful they are. I don't know if they're a part of a bigger solution or if they stand alone yet. I'm not sure. I think you should experiment. What I would say is most of the roadmaps that we see don't answer those questions. So regardless of the tool, I want those questions as much as possible answered. Now, how do you build your roadmap? And this is what uh, most people get wrong. Most people think that a roadmap is I come together, I have a meeting, and I'm done. And that never happens that way. We actually find that roadmapping, especially the very first time you're building a roadmap of this detail, will take you four to six weeks. And you're going to go, oh, it shouldn't take me that long, or we're smarter than you, it won't take us that long. <laughs> but it will. Just kind of trust me on this one. The first stage is you're going to gather data and you're going to prepare. And there's a technique that we have, a collaboration framework called Prune the Product Tree, that is amazingly powerful at helping you get the data for your road mapping. I'll talk about it in a second. Then you've got to get the right people involved. <coughs> at a minimum, we recommend product management because they should know who they're serving and the problems those people are having. Product marketing, because those people are responsible for communicating to the market and also to the sales organization. And engineering, because how do you know how you're going to build it if the engineering team aren't with you in the road mapping session? Then you're going to engage. So this is a photo from VeriSign where we engaged in person. So this was uh, to my friend in the back. This was just plain old post-its. And we call these roadmap jams. And in a roadmap jam, you get these people together and you get a draft roadmap, but it's a draft, it's non-binding. Because almost always, the rigor of this process will cause you to create a set of questions. And if you force people to answer those questions too quickly or without giving them the time to go get the answers, they will feel very uncomfortable. 
So there's about two to four weeks where you're going to find questions in this process and you bring people back and then you create your roadmap based on the answers to those questions with the people who've had time to get those answers. And you get a much stronger result. Now how do you update? I recommend the following. Updating quarterly, updating men, men messy, I'll talk about that. Update if you have a major release. Update on competitor moves. Update for new tech opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. What we like to do is for our larger clients is we'll poster print these. I mean, getting a piece of poster paper printed at Kinko's is like 10, or FedEx is like 10 bucks, right? The paper's cheap, it's miscommunication that's expensive. So what we do is we poster print it, tape it to the wall, put some markers next to it, and let people mark it up. When it's messy enough, that's a pretty good signal as a product manager, you all gotta update it. Now let me give you a hint. What I find uh, very effective is most product people, especially when they're ex-engineers, they like to put version numbers on things. Like this was version 17.2 of the roadmap. What they forget is no one ever goes back and look at the prior versions. That's not helpful in fast-moving organizations. So if you want to do something to either shake up your own process or really shake up your company, don't put a version number on your roadmap. Put a next update date on your roadmap. Print it out and at the bottom say next update on October 17th. And just guarantee that you're going to reprint. Even if nothing changes, just reprint mm -hmm. and put a new update on it. Because then people will have a reason to come back. They know that something's coming. They know that there's going to be an update that's going to be relevant to them. Now, when you need scale, you go online. A few years ago, the Scrum Alliance said we need to engage our trainers, which are called certified Scrum trainers, to help us shape the future of the Scrum Alliance. So we have a technique called prune the product tree. Think of it as a very semantically rich whiteboard. And not a plain whiteboard for drawing, but something with a lot more semantics about how people work. Designed for individual team collaboration with data analytics underneath to look for patterns. So each of those groups of people did their own roadmap, collaboration at scale, and then we analyze and look for the patterns, the similarities in time frames, the similarities in content, and the similarity in sequence. And when you find similarities, as a product manager, what you're looking for is pattern and signal strength. And you're getting it from the market when you can get that feedback from your internal stakeholders, your customers, et cetera. Now, what our platform lets you do is define different time horizons, different iconography. Um, uh, one of the things that we find missing in a lot of roadmaps is a good understanding of infrastructure, the roots of the tree, if you will. So we like to expose the roots, and we like to structure it so that people can interact with it. Now, these techniques aren't exclusive to online. Again, you can do lots of different formats for internal roadmapping. It gets pretty big. This was from a project in Europe. It was 11 meters long by the time we were done and 2 meters high. Right? Pretty big roadmapping. I just um, the guys, when we were negotiating this talk, I was just in Amsterdam for a, a, a week of road mapping at a client. I don't know if anyone has heard of a company called PayU. They do, they're basically PayPal for the rest of the world. So they do Latin America, Africa, Central Eastern Europe, India, um, and they're owned by NASPERS. So we were doing a global road mapping session. Um, so the summary is, roadmaps communicate strategic intentions. They're really critical as the mechanism of linking glue. They're, they're glue. They're, they're the strategy, the glue, and the tactic. They enable organizations to have these really powerful and effective conversations. And online, tool, online tools like what we provide, it's not so much the roadmap, it's the data that goes into the roadmap. So I'm going to, uh, I think I have, how much time do I have left? Huh? 10 minutes. So just to give you an idea of what this looks like, a, a very simple and straightforward version of our tool and our roadmap is uh, prune the product tree, right? And you can look at rotten apples. So this would be like, you know, icky thing <coughs> about product. 
And if we were on the same forum, we could collaborate, we could move them around, we could interact with them. The semantics come from what we call regions. Think of a region as a geofence. It's an overlay on top of the image so that I can say things like, what's the time frame? Is it sooner or is it later? So this apple is later. And as customers or participants or stakeholders move that around, they would move it from sooner to later. And we just pick up its location automatically by the geofence. So now I know it's sooner. You can import and export to Excel as you would expect or other spreadsheet tools. And notice that it keeps track of time. And once you have this as a mem, right, this idea of I can have a collaborative framework, you can start to get creative. You can add, for example, different pictures or use a picture that would, that would be more appropriate to your company. Sometimes road mapping doesn't have to be based on a picture. Are you familiar with business value versus effort grids? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. you guys with me? Put business value in the y-axis, effort. So we work with Cisco, who's one of our clients, and um, their collaboration technology group decided that their structure was gonna be once a month, the portfolio board was gonna have new items for discussion. Then they were gonna slot them into business, technology, experience, or go to market. And they were gonna align them to the different products, WebEx, Jabber, and Spark. So let's say someone have the, has this great idea for a, a new phone uh, feature. Well, as I move it over, I might say, well, that's really part of the business, and we're gonna put it into uh, Spark. So I change its type to Spark, and now you start to look at it, and you're thinking, how do I negotiate so that it stays high business value with less effort? Because that's the negotiation that product management and engineering have in this collaborative forum. So in real time, we start to have the conversation. The engineering team says, okay, I know this new phone feature is really a lot of value, but and in this case, they're doing Fibonacci numbers. So if I look at the list, the effort sizes are Fibonacci. I don't know, do you guys have agile teams doing Fibonacci One points based two estimates? Two. One plus two, two plus two. One, yeah, one, two, three, five, right? And that's um, the agile, uh, many agile teams do this. So now I'm picking up my Fibonacci numbers automatically by the placement of the item in the board. And so I have this conversation where the engineering team says, well, product management, if you are willing to drop these requirements, we can move it here. And product management goes, yeah, but that's going to drop our business value. And so it drops our business value, but it's significantly easier to implement. It's still high enough to do. Let's go do it. Are you with me? So this is an example of when, I, when you start talking about road mapping, you can pick frameworks and visual tools and design them the way you want in our platform so it's exactly tuned to your company. Now, the one that we're experimenting with, and so I was doing road mapping with my head of sales, Laura, my CTO, Dan, and me today, and we're trying out a new framework that we think is for us, and here's what our roadmap presently looks like. And you're like, wow, that's a lot of stuff. But if I zoom in, I can start to talk about, we've got Weave is the name of our platform. It has a bunch of engines. So this is how we think Weave will grow. So I can start to see the growth of the tree. We skip the impact effort matrix for now. And we, then we put in a Kanban board of what we're to do, doing, Loaded on preview is our preview website before customers get it. Production is the production site, and then updated on the website. I have a curious quality where I don't get wrapped around the axle if my on-site web documentation doesn't actually match the product. So I tell my dev team, just you know, run, run, <coughs> run. We'll catch up on the docs and the support. And that, it typically works well enough for us. There's a couple of additional parts to this roadmap. There's a little bit of a legend, so we can talk about our corporate strategy. There's a little bit of a corporate 
uh, marketing combine. Again, we started this today, so it's not completely filled out. And then there's, uh, sometimes I like to uh, shake up the visual structure of time. So we were talking about the events and rhythms. Well, if it's truly a rhythm, it's gonna come by every year, like your birthday. So here, we have a conference that we're putting on in December called Engage the Bay, which is designed to promote civic engagement at scale throughout the Bay Area. We've got, we're gonna host it at NetApp. We've got speakers from the city of San Jose and city of Oakland who are doing these participatory budgeting projects. And we're gonna try and expand this as a capability. So this is what our roadmap looks like. And one of the things that I'm cautious about with those tools is you have to make a big choice in one of those tools. Do you want to be constrained in how they think your roadmap should be laid out, or do you want to have a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more customization, a little bit more personalization, so that you can create imagery that's really aligned towards the needs of your business? And I think that you come out ahead when you start with something that's completely aligned to your business, and then maybe load it into a tool for management. It's kind of the distinction of, uh, the, does anyone use Jira or, or things like that? Sure. Jira is terrible for planning, but it's great for execution. You don't, you don't plan strategically in Jira. You don't think strategically in Jira. You execute against the list in Jira. So you, you need tools like this that let you think strategically, let you collaborate strategically, let you interact strategically. Okay, I'm, I'm effectively done, and I want to be respectful for my next speaker, but if I have time, yeah. and yeah, people exactly. have a question or two, you know, I like to do, you know, hashtag ask me anything. So, AMA, ask me anything. Go. Oh. I'll say one more thing, because I said this at the Agile Conference keynote. Um, organizations start to decline when they stop caring about their future and they stopped road mapping in a really fundamental way. We actually did a project with um, some Hispanic neighborhoods in San Jose in 2013 where we did prune the product tree for road mapping the health and growth of those neighborhoods. It was really amazing. It was part of the Great Neighborhoods Project in San Jose. And we have this vision right now of what would happen if we could do every single community in a city build a community-based roadmap and then analyze it to find the patterns and trends that would be across the city's communities and would be the best way to keep the city itself alive and healthy and vibrant. So I think the techniques that we have as product managers or the skills that we bring as product managers, I think applied to societal scale problems are very, it's a very compelling mix. But again, I, I, I should, do, any questions real quick before I jump off? So you apply this to, when you see the participatory budgeting, is, is that a framework like this that you're, you're doing? Yes, with? yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a different framework. Um, think of a list of items with uh, money, and then uh, residents collaborate on which ones they want to fund. And um, the, the, the participatory budgeting process comes in two flavors. One is where it's really big numbers, and we're using it as a form of market research. And uh, 